Hey guys, welcome to the show this week. So, you enjoyed Jurassic World this summer, right? I mean, it was a good time in the movies. Well, consider yourself lucky, because you don't know how close you were to watching the shittiest dinosaur movie since Barney's Great Adventure. And don't even look that one up, alright? Just trust me, I'm doing you a favor. Anyway, this week's rejected movie idea took one of the most beloved movies of the 90s and completely forgot what was fun and exciting about it, replacing it with, well, bullshit. Or, to quote Jeff Goldblum, Dino... Droppings? Droppings? That's right, we are talking about the long lost script to the unproduced dino flick that would have been Jurassic Park 4. The origin of this epic movie blunder starts with the true villains of the Jurassic Park franchise, Universal Pictures executives. Executives who, not satisfied with how horrible things looked for the franchise after the dino turd that was Jurassic Park 3, still wanted to run the series into the ground until there wasn't a dollar left to make out of these dinos. Also, keep in mind that this was the year 2001, many years before Hollywood learned how to properly reboot their franchises. Also, 22 years hadn't gone by since the original, so nostalgia hadn't kicked in yet to give the sequel some much-needed sympathy points. With that in mind, Jurassic Park 4, as written by John Sayles, writer and director of Not a Single Movie You've Ever Seen, would have starred a former Navy SEAL turned soldier of fortune who was commissioned by John Hammond to return to the island that housed the original Jurassic Park and retrieve the dino embryos that Newman from Seinfeld left on the island. Now, how did Hammond even know that Newman took embryos and hid them in a little shaving cream canister to begin with? Well, if that kind of plot hole has you upset, you might want to just stop right now because the rest of this is likely to give you an aneurysm. So, once on the island, our former Navy SEAL protagonist retrieves the embryos but is taken into custody by something called the Grendel Corporation. And they're a private army of mercenaries hell-bent on using dino DNA to create a race of super dino soldiers. And they force our former Navy SEAL to train said dinosaurs in combat. So, right about now, you can start seeing that some of these ideas filtered into the script for Jurassic World. For instance, the main character is a former soldier, played by Chris Pratt in this year's film, but back in 2003, this part was rumored to go to David Boreanaz, mainly because it was 2003 and Hollywood didn't know any better. But while some of the pieces looked the same, John Sayles' script was going for something very different than what we saw in theaters this summer. And what I mean by that is he was going for something really shitty. So, the CEO of the Grendel Corporation presents David Boreanaz with his stable of genetically modified dino soldiers. But, unlike those we've seen in other Jurassic Park films, the DNA of these dinos has been mixed up with both canine and human strands. That's right, we are talking about full-blown dino-dog-human hybrids. Now, the concept art for these franchise-killing monsters leaked online years ago, so do a quick Google search for yourself and experience the horror that is the imagination of a Universal Pictures executive, probably on blow. Not satisfied by simply looking ridiculous, the script then fully commits to basically becoming a rejected late-night adult swim cartoon. I am talking about raptors wearing bulletproof vests, night vision goggles, and cameras strapped to their heads. And why? Why would they do this, you ask? Well, how else? Are the raptors supposed to succeed on their first combat mission that consists of rescuing a 10-year-old girl in the mean streets of Morocco. But all that is just foreplay compared to the insanity that is the movie's third act. Now again, if you saw Jurassic World, and who the hell didn't, you enjoyed one of the most fun third acts that we've ever seen in a summer blockbuster. It truly is a beautiful display of action, humor, thrills, and of course nostalgia. But had the original Jurassic Park 4 gotten its way, you would have been treated to the trippiest mess of a final battle in dino movie history. It's in the last 20 pages of this rejected script that the Grendel Corporation, in typical jerk-off fashion, unleashed their squad of dino soldiers on the compound of some scar-faced-like drug lord in Latin America. As the dinosaurs parachute down from Grendel's attack choppers, they coordinate their attack and go in for the kill. Oh, and don't worry, the bullets from the drug lord's henchmen no match for the perfectly coordinated attack from dinosaurs wearing bulletproof vests. At some point in this epic brawl, the raptors learn how to claw off their tracking devices and unleash all their military might on their former mercenary masters. Now, luckily for us, common sense prevailed and Universal eventually shit-canned the whole script. And in turn, we got to enjoy a much better sequel that paid enough homage to the original while still bringing a lot of new stuff to the franchise. As far as John Sayles' original Jurassic Park 4 script goes, let's just hope that Universal did the right thing and quarantined it on some abandoned island 120 miles off the coast of Costa Rica, where no one would be able to ever get their hands on it, saving us from what surely would have been the shittiest dinosaur movie ever right after Barney's Great Adventure.